Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. Uh, we got a great show lined up for today. We're going to do some catch up. But before we get to our guests, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some things going on locally. Last night we did an all hydrogen powered event, which was a uh, gala fundraiser for Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, all powered by hydrogen. And uh, it was a great event. So thanks to Katie for inviting us out and giving us a challenge of running a running an event that we thought would take 5,000 watts and took 10,000 watts. So it was pretty challenging pulling it all together, but we did it. Right now, I'd like to show you, <clears throat> excuse me, a quick video that uh, was also a highlight of this week. It was produced by High Perspective here in Honolulu, and it won second place in the local animation um, professional uh, advertisers awards. So, uh, Robert, if you could roll that video. Hydrogen, the simplest element and also the most abundant. Hydrogen makes up roughly 75% of all mass in the universe. Hydrogen also powers most of the stars in our universe, so it's only fitting that it has come to be recognized as a viable alternative energy source. And we need alternatives, because fossil fuels are problematic. They're messy, dirty, expensive to obtain and not secure. And they're limited. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is everywhere. Hydrogen can be produced from a wide variety of sources, including water itself, using other renewable energies. That means it's clean, really clean. As a zero emission fuel source, the only byproducts are water, heat, and electricity. Easily transported, hydrogen can be stored and distributed on a large scale as either gas or liquid. As a fuel, hydrogen itself is very light. In fact, hydrogen is 472 times more efficient by weight than lead acid batteries. And it isn't just for transportation. Hydrogen can also effectively produce and store energy for power grids. Hydrogen gas is transformed into energy within a fuel cell. As hydrogen passes through a fuel cell, electrons are released and an electrical current is produced and captured for use. Electric vehicle motors powered by hydrogen fuel cells are twice as efficient as gas or diesel engines. They can travel farther distances than lithium batteries, especially in heavy vehicles, and can last for decades. Hydrogen-powered fuel cells are scalable to buses and commercial fleets such as trucks, trains, ships, and aircraft. Fuel cells allow for fast, easy refueling, and hydrogen can be easily adapted to current refueling stations, making it a convenient fuel source for everyone. It is a proven, safe, clean, and efficient energy source currently in use worldwide. Hydrogen is everywhere, including our clean energy future. Hey, and I love that video. So congratulations again to the folks at High Perspective for uh, winning the Pelle Award, second place in the uh, animation division. And uh, we'll be showing that video some more. In fact, I've sent it out pretty broad and wide uh, around the world because I think it's a great video to introduce folks to hydrogen. But today it's time for me to introduce uh, my guest for today, Trevor Melton from Nikola Motors. And uh, we talked to him, I think about seven, eight months ago and uh, got an introduction to what he's doing. and. Uh, uh, we in our shop think he's doing a regular rocket launch and moon launch here. Uh, but boy, when he takes off, I'm looking so forward to seeing his products out there. So Trevor, welcome to Stand the Energy Man. I really appreciate you um, coming on this time. I know how busy you are, and I see you in the news all the time, and I'm really excited about what I see. So uh, welcome back to the show, and we're, we're looking for an update, so just hit it. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, the last year we've spent uh, primarily focusing on ensuring all the components on the semi-truck are ready for production um, and testing with fleet. So uh, for the public that knows about Nikola Motor Company, we've designed the first ever hydrogen electric semi-truck that can outperform a diesel in every category and weighs less than a diesel and, and operates at about 30% less than a diesel also. So that truck will be uh, finalized near the end of this year, and it'll be unveiled next year uh, in January to the world. And at that point, it goes out with fleets for testing. Uh, we'll have 25 vehicles with different fleets around the country being tested full-time, and uh, really uh, uh, some really fun stuff being able to see that truck completely done. 
Is it going to look a lot like your initial um, model that you rolled out last year? No, it's changed quite a bit. I mean, it's still very very aerodynamic, but it's a lot more aggressive looking. Um, if you look at the old, uh, the very first truck we ever built, it looked very similar to a bullet train. Right. Very soft lines, very rounded. Uh, the new one has got uh, more aggressive lines, a lot more uh, lines in the vehicle itself, but still the same type of aerodynamic shape. Um, but it's a uh, it's a lot shorter too. We've shortened up the production vehicle by almost four feet, so we have a two ten wheelbase compared to like a two thirty two forty on the old one. Okay, so your your um, where your drayage truck has it got those kind of lines, the the short. Yeah, exactly. It's actually exactly like the uh, the the day cab that you see online. Great. Yeah. So the just... day cab will be both the day cab and the sleeper. That design will be the exact same uh, design we use in both trucks. Okay, we threw that image up there so the folks got to see that on the screen while you were talking. But uh, that's that's awesome. That's I like that that the lines and that thing. It looks really nice. I think you've done some great work there. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun unveiling it, you know, in January. That's the, and that's not just a that's not just a prototype out there built. It's actually a pre production unit ready to ready to be finalized into full production for twenty twenty one. So we're we're about five to seven years ahead of our competitors right now. Outstanding. And um, your infrastructure pieces. I know you were working hard to set up uh, nationwide infrastructure for these things because they go like twelve hundred miles, right, between uh, top offs on one hundred kilograms. They can in, in peak, uh, you know, in kind of a perfect scenario. So most most of the time, you'll get about 500 to 800 miles on a fill up of hydrogen, and that'll give you. Uh, we'll have stations um, pretty much every 450 miles throughout the country. We have uh, we already have two of the stations ordered right now that go up this year. We've got 18 more um, next year, and we've got over 700 going up over the next eight years. Outstanding. So those stations will cover the entire continental U.S. and Canada, and uh, allow you to pretty much handle. Um, you know, being able to drive a truck anywhere you want in any direction. Are you, are you looking at making the hydrogen of those stations available for like Toyota and Hyundai and smaller vehicles, or is it going to be strictly? Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyone can fill up at them. Yep. Anyone can fill up at them. Terrific. And so, uh, what's the total number of stations you're looking at again at the end end game? At least this first. Uh, about 700 stations. Wow. So we'll have over eight years. We'll have about 700 go up. So we got a lot of stations going up every year. Great. So what are some of the new improvements in your new design besides the lines? What are what are some of the other things you can talk about? Yeah, I mean, we shortened it up by about four feet. That was a big monumental task. We lowered the center of gravity down lower. Um, we've made improvements on the drivetrain efficiency. We've um, made the interior of the cab uh, more spacious for the driver. We added 14 inches more of elbow room. We added camera mirrors. Uh, we went to full screen displays. Uh, primarily, the entire truck took a makeover from the ground up. So everything that's on the old truck has been replaced with new. Wow. And so you say January you'll start rolling these things out. Where is the first market going to be? Where the, what are some of the companies that are looking at using this thing right off the bat? So you'll see that come out May 3rd. We have a big announcement on May 3rd. Um, one of the most respected brands in America is going to announce that they're converting every truck over to Nikola only. And that's the first time it's ever been done. So, uh, you know, in, they ship hundreds of millions of miles, you know, a year. These guys know shipping better than anybody. And every one of their trucks is going to be converted to Nikola, away from diesels and away from other vehicles. So this is a, uh, you know, it's kind of a big, a big statement. Ultimately, there's a, there's a rush to see who is the leader in trucking zero emission. And Nikola is certainly, the, uh, certainly the, uh, the Super Bowl champ right now, for sure. Hey, are any of those 700 stations in, in the state of Hawaii? Uh, no, they're not. Oh, come on, buddy. Um, now, we hope we, oh, you mean the 700. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. you were talking about the first, oh, the no, first no. batch. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a couple out there. Um, yeah. Ultimately, it kind of comes down to the fleets and how many trucks they have and what the political, uh, you know, uh, stance is. If the, you know, if you get the, if you get the right people out there that are willing to push it and want to move to, move to trucks, uh, you know, in zero emission, we're happy to come out and help. We just, you know, we haven't seen a lot of, uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot of traction from uh, trucking groups out in Hawaii, but if they want to move to zero emission, we're certainly willing to help them. Yeah, we, we don't have much of a market for your long haul trucks, but for your drayage trucks, um, that's all we use here, yep. the short beds, because we, we haul a lot of 40 yep. foot containers all around the state on all islands. And the big island has some long runs. I mean, it's probably 100 miles you know, between Kona and Hilo, roughly up a big mountain and down the other side. So. Um, your stuff would definitely be plug-in electric, hands down, 
and uh, would be a lot cleaner than the diesel stuff we're using now. And we're, we, yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this. I mean, look, we're, go ahead. we're all for it. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to the fleet. The fleet's need to call us and say, hey, we want these trucks, because right now we got over $9 billion in pre-orders. Okay. So, so if they want to, you know, if they, go ahead, what? Are you going to be in any of the shows um, that any of our, our uh, trucking companies would show up at uh, on the mainland there? I, I know they go to those, those big. Uh, uh, in 2019, we will be. So remember, we unveiled the truck in January, the production truck. So um, in 2019, we'll have it all over the country. You'll see it everywhere next year. Okay, great. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting stuff. I know you get out here to Hawaii once in a while. When's your next trip out this way? Yeah, I don't know. My my dad has a house out in uh, in, in Haiku over on Maui, and I uh, certainly love to, love to come spend time there. I haven't been there for about a year and a half. So I need to get out there for sure and uh, um you know, ultimately, we have that off-road UTV that's uh, really fun, and I think we're going to try to bring one over to the Hawaii Islands and go drive it around. So yeah, I'll try to get over there sometime this year for sure. Yeah, we just put your ATV up on the screen, and uh, that's a that's a mean-looking machine. We're looking forward to seeing that, and that would do great on Maui. Yeah, it'll be fun. The Big Island has yeah, a lot of Yeah, all zero emission, fun. Well, yeah, waterproof. Um, it's it's a blast. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get it over there, and people can start renting those instead of those gas guzzling Jeeps and Mustangs. Well, if you look at the Big Island, there's already hydrogen over there at uh, Blue Planet. And then uh, the University of Hawaii is opening a station over there this summer. So there's two sources of hydrogen on the Big Island already if you want to run one over there. We're still awesome. working on Maui. Yeah. Good. Okay. we got a lot of work to do. We've got to hit the whole country as fast as we can. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see where we can, uh, you know, how quick we can get out there. All right, Trevor. Hey, we're going to take a quick break here and go and uh, show some of the other shows on ThinkTech, and we'll be back with Trevor in about 60 seconds. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, hello, and welcome back to Stan Energy Man on my lunch hour with Trevor Milton from Nikola Motors. And uh, we just spent the first uh, 15 minutes talking about some of the new models that uh, they're going to go into production next year, and he's going to roll out for public display uh, starting in January. And I, this is really exciting. In fact, I, I hate to be a downer on your vehicles, but I'm more excited about your infrastructure plans than the vehicles. And you got some awesome vehicles, so that says a lot about your infrastructure. But um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what your, the technical side of your vehicles. A lot of the folks don't realize why it makes sense to use hydrogen versus batteries when you start to talk big trucks and big buses and things. And right now we have a, a lot of folks over here that are sold on battery power and they think it's great and they want to put batteries in all their buses. But um, I tell them that when it comes to energy by weight, you can't beat hydrogen. And when it comes to transportation, weight you know, counts for a lot of stuff. So Trevor, give us give us an idea of why you picked hydrogen in your designs for your trucks. Yeah, I mean, the first thing to know about Nikola is we actually build both vehicles. We build battery electric and hydrogen electric uh, with batteries. So we're not, you know, we don't really care which way uh, people want to go. We'll just give you the straight facts on it. When it comes to hydrogen, when, when it comes to towing loads, that's where hydrogen really makes sense. The, uh, the battery electric is very good when you're not pulling loads. Uh, that allows you to kind of go a couple hundred miles, you know, busting people around is very good. If you get into the, the heavy, haul, heavy hauling of load, you know, where you have a trailer behind your vehicle, um, there's a lot of advantages with hydrogen. One is we weigh a lot less weight. So if you were to compare our truck with, a, say, the Tesla semi truck, we'll weigh between six and 10,000 pounds lighter than their truck. If you look at uh, a refill time, we can refill in about 15, 20 minutes where it takes anywhere from two to five hours on a very expensive charger to charge a charge a vehicle with that much energy in it. Um, it's also easier to produce hydrogen at a, at a cheaper rate because of renewable sources than it is through storing it in batteries only to put it back into another vehicle with batteries. 
So, you know, we're not, we don't really care which way people go um, because we sell both types of vehicles, but ultimately our, when it comes to heavy, heavy loads, hauling trailers, hydrogen, certainly uh, uh, a much better solution, cheaper solution, lighter solution. And uh, is, um, you know, it, it just turns out to be a, a better packaging solution also. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that you're kind of agnostic about uh, whether it's battery or hydrogen, because it's really more more focused on the the purpose and the distance and the climb the um, ter the terrain and things like that than just straight. What do you like yep. better, batteries or hydrogen? So if you have short yeah. range, well, one size doesn't fit all. That's right. the thing to remember. Right. One size does not fit all, and and you'll never have one product that'll fix every problem. It's, right. It's a blend of technologies to fix everything. And the hydrogen vehicles all have batteries in them anyway. They're, they're going to all have batteries. Too. They do. Yeah, one of the things that, yep. in fact, we had a visitor come in the shop this week, and uh, we were talking about the um, worldwide um, stores or availability of uh, things like lithium. And uh, it's actually fairly limited. So rather than trying to load up vehicles with just lithium batteries, probably better to spread those lithium batteries over a lot of vehicles and couple it with hydrogen. But this guy pointed out to me, and he does apparently does a lot of study, that cobalt's even rarer than lithium, and the current lithium batteries yep. require cobalt. So, you know, we kind of need to make those uh, those um, materials go as far as we can. And I would say that using the hydrogen yeah. would help in that part too. Well, how about um, some yeah, of the Yeah, hydrogen's other... the only element that's completely renewable. So ultimately, the only thing you have is, is carbon fiber tanks that you can recycle. And uh, you have, you know, unlimited hydrogen indefinitely for thousands of years where you're not using up the Earth's materials to uh, to support it. So that's the advantage of hydrogen is it just doesn't, it doesn't take any rare Earth materials really other than a little bit of platinum and you can recycle that. So you can run off of millions of years off of hydrogen and never run out of resources. Yeah, and I think that's important. another important factor. You know, when people start to just look at um, the technologies, they're, they're very short-sighted. Um, the recyclability of components is important. The toxicity of end state materials is important. The, the um, hazardous, uh, you know, mining lithium is not exactly a clean sport, and um, that factor has to be taken into account. We, we have to take in the cradle to grave aspect of all these technologies, how long they last, how much can be recycled, basically address the sustainability piece, and hydrogen certainly has an yep. edge on sustainability. Yep. So uh, the um, the components in your truck, do you have subcontractors making things like the fuel cell, or are you guys doing all that in-house? So we we own all the intellectual property behind every major component on the truck. So the fuel cell, the battery, the e-axle, the controls, things like that. Um, but what we do is we sub it out to groups to commercialize it. Uh -huh. So we don't want to be in trying to commercialize every component ourselves. So, for instance, like the e-axle and the fuel cell will come from uh, Robert Bosch, one of the biggest companies in the world. Sure. When it comes to the suspension, that'll come from Meritor. Uh, you know, and stability control will come from Wabco. And these are all things that um, ultimately were, you know, we don't want to do it ourselves. We don't want to do everything ourselves. So we, you know, we design it, we engineer it, we own it, and we send it out to groups to help us uh, commercialize it. Okay, and for all the gearheads in the audience, give us some idea about power, torque, and those kind of things. Yeah, so a, a normal diesel truck's about 400 horsepower, sometimes 450. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty high-end uh, diesel. Some of them are even down to 350. So uh, the Nikola uh, semi truck is uh, is over a thousand horsepower. But what we have to do is we have to tune it down because it has so much horsepower. It just you can't use it all. So it has over a thousand horsepower. It has uh, more torque than a diesel. Um, it can accelerate from zero to 60 with a full load. About you know, about four to five times faster than a diesel. But once again, no one's really concerned about acceleration speeds. So right. it's, it's all about safety. Ultimately, electric motors are just much more safe than diesels are. You can control the slippage, the stability, the control, the analog braking, the braking power in, you know, within milliseconds, whereas a diesel takes um, sometimes up to a full second to even change what's going on with the drivetrain. Yeah. So these are things that... Um, you know that are more advantageous with electric, and and you don't have a traditional transmission in this. What, what kind of um, transmission or transaxle kind of uh, technology is in an electric drivetrain? Yeah, it's just an electric motor, and then how you couple it to a gear reduction is uh, doesn't really matter. So with ours, we have an electric motor for every wheel. It's sitting in the middle of the frame, and it has two half shafts, one to each wheel, with two motors. So we have two motors, two gear reductions, and two half shafts for every set of wheels. So we have what we call true 
independent torque vectoring or vehicle or wheel control because every wheel is driven independently by its own motor. So that's the that's the advantage of a uh, um, you know of electric motors is you can control every wheel individually. So and, there is no transmission, but there is a single gear reduction. Okay, so the driver's not shifting gears all the time. I mean, we hear the drivers over here pull out of a stop sign and they're going through five or six gears by the time they're up to 25 miles an hour. Um, so this is totally different uh, concept for your drivers now. Yeah, yeah, you don't have any of that. It's just a, just a pedal, yeah. just zero to zero to full speed on one gear. We do have something out here in Hawaii. I think we're near, nearly one of the first uh, states to have it. One of our landfill folks has a uh, electric D7 Caterpillar bulldozer. And the reason he likes the electric trans, uh, transaxle, the electric, the electric drivetrain, is not only that his guys aren't shifting all the time, but his maintenance costs go down, and um, there's less wear and tear on the equipment because the diesel operators like to leave it in one gear and not shift, and it tends to tear the transmission up. So he's finding a lot of maintenance advantages to this electric. Plus, he's using a D7 where he used to use a D9, which is a bigger piece of equipment. So um, that sounds like yep. you're experiencing the same kind of... Uh, Revelations. Yep. Yeah, all kind, of, all the same similarities. I mean, ultimately, electric drivetrains have very little maintenance, if any, compared to any other vehicle. So they're they're better across the board. That's certain. Whether you go electric or hydrogen electric, it really doesn't matter. Just hydrogen electric gives you a little bit better advantages with weight and range and fill up times. You know, battery only gives you advantages also to get those same performances just on a limited range. Okay. Um, regenerative braking, is that just on the truck itself, or do you, do you envision the trailers actually having regenerative braking as well? No, I think most of them will have them in the long run, um, but trailers are always used separately from the trucks, so a little harder to make sure they combine together, but as trailers get smarter and smarter and as, and as technology is solidified, then people will begin to make trailers that are compatible with the, uh, with the you know, regenerative braking as well. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's always been a big factor for us. When you factor in the regenerative braking for the battery packs, that, that helps a lot, especially in hilly terrain like we have here. Um, the bus is really, you can use a lot of battery power up going up a hill, and coming down that hill gives you yep. a lot back, so we really appreciate that. Yep. Okay, so the drivetrain's different. We've got regenerative braking. That's something that most people aren't used to. Um, any other factors in the hydrogen and the electric drivetrain that... You're, you're finding the customers or potential customers are really liking? I mean, it really just comes down to having a vehicle that's nearly silent, you know, having a vehicle that's zero emission, getting rid of all the pollution, getting rid of all the noise. It's very quiet. Um, hydrogen's a, a very good advantage because you can create it over a 24-hour period. You can take energy off the windmills. You can take energy off the solar. You can take energy off the waves. And you can create hydrogen whenever it's good. With you know, And you don't need to worry about storing it because it – the hydrogen is essentially in one kilogram of hydrogen has 35 usable kilowatt hours. So if you think about a Tesla car, their 100 model, which is their high end model, three kilograms of hydrogen has more energy than that than that uh, than that car has. So it's all about being able to store a massive amount of energy in a very small space, and that's what hydrogen gives you. So. Yeah, I tell folks that uh, the number that sticks in my head, I have a little uh, um, battery efficiency chart and it shows like uh, lead acid batteries are 52 amp hours per kilogram uh, most lithium batteries are in the four to six hundred amp hours per kilogram if you're into hazardous material hydrazine gives you like 2,000 to 2,500 amp hours per kilogram and hydrogen fuel cells are 26,000 amp hours per kilogram so by weight it's hard to beat yeah. hydrogen for uh, for energy efficiency yeah yeah you yeah know, it really is when, when we're talking about batteries, I just, just flashed back, I wanted to ask you this. Um, one of the things that people tend to overlook when, they, when they're looking at battery infrastructure is the charging stations. Now for a big truck like yours, if it's a battery truck and you guys have the experience in this, um, what kind of facility upgrades does the average place need to have in terms of adding a transformer or, or things like that just to accommodate the charger for a big vehicle like this? You did mention it was more expensive to, you know, the infrastructure was more expensive uh, for charging than uh, most people anticipate. But give us some idea of what the magnitude is on that. Yeah, so in order to charge a semi-truck like ours, like a, say like a Tesla truck, it would, uh, you know, it would cost you about $500,000 for one charger that would charge in three hours. If you wanted to charge in one and a half hours, it would cost you a million dollars. Um, 
So ultimately, you got an enormous amount of money just for one charger, and then you're going to need, you know, tons of those for a fleet of trucks. So it, it's pretty expensive. It's it's a it's very very expensive. It's about a hundred grand per hundred kilowatts um, for a uh, for a charger, and that includes your install and your your uh, you know your hardware. So they're pretty pricey. That's one one thing people don't realize is when you go buy it, you know, when you go buy a uh, um, an electric vehicle, at least on a, on a car, it's pretty cheap, six, eight hundred bucks for a charger. But when you get into a truck, you you have to take that in times it by a hundred, you know, or a thousand. Yeah. So it, it's, I mean, it's just very, very expensive. It's uh, very, very pricey. Yeah, that's part of that cradle to grave you know, and totally burden cost I talked about. You, you know, we're used to just buying the car and then buying the gas. But when you're buying the the gas station and the gas production, you know, and basically in, in electricity, you're talking about a pretty steep investment for uh, charging. And then the time-wise, um, you know, if, if the trucks are making money, being on the road 24 hours with multiple drivers and people like doing the Pony Express thing rather than a sole driver doing it all himself, hey, you want those vehicles on the road, they're making money. And you can do that with hydrogen instead of stopping and, and plugging in a vehicle for two, two to four to six hours. So I know that's another yep. big factor. Yeah, hydrogen stations are um, ultimately what we what we try to tell people is it costs us about you know right around about a hundred grand a truck to build a hydrogen station. It costs about five hundred grand a truck to build a uh, build a uh, charging network. Yeah. So it's it's about one fifth the cost um, to build a um, build a, a hydrogen network compared to a charging network for trucks. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're down to our last minute, Trevor, and what I'd like to do is just leave it with you to, to spend the last minute telling the entire world on Stan Energy Man what you're looking forward to and what's uh, what's exciting for you in the next year or so. Yeah, look, I, I just think it's about, you know, really changing life. I mean, how fun is it that we get to, we get to get rid of all these oil companies and this diesel fuel and the pollutions and money just being, you know, hundreds of billions being thrown into the oil companies' pockets? It's time to change that, time to keep that money local. And, uh, you know, I love that. That's what's so great about hydrogen is all the money stays local. So it's time to, time to keep it local, time to, you know, build hydrogen network out, time to get these trucks out there, get rid of all the pollution, make the health benefits better, get the, you know, it's just all around a better, you know, a, a very fun future for all of us. And the technology is there now, so over the next two to three years, you'll start to see these popping up everywhere. Well, we'll do our part over here, April. We'll get the HCAT folks out beating the bushes, and we'll sell some trucks uh, here on Oahu, and we'll sell some of your ATVs out on Maui and the Big Island for you because they sure got a boatload of them over there, and they're they're pretty cool looking too. So, Trevor, I want to thank Sounds you again good, so, Thanks much. so much. Thanks for being with us, and okay. uh, we'll get you up to you another six months and, and do this again, all right? No problem. Sounds good. Thanks okay. so much. See you. Be Bye-bye. Best of luck, Trevor. Bye-bye. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Stan Energy Man today, and uh, we'll see you next Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. And thanks to Sydney and Robert here in the station for making it all the magic happen. Trust me, it's like a moonshot every Friday when we do this stuff. Aloha.